Hey everyone, welcome back. When should you purchase a car after filing bankruptcy? Stay tuned. So first off, if you're new to this channel or you haven't seen any of my videos before, I'm gonna have a bit of a minute, minute and a half intro. So if you wanted to skip directly to the answer, just go ahead and click in the uh, comment section down below and I'll make different links to different sections of the video. But um, to introduce myself, my name is Austin Harley with the Austin Harley Real Estate Group and I do credit repair. I'm a real estate agent in the DC metro area. I got my board full of stuff right now, so sorry about that. Just focus on this section right here. Um, but I've been having a ton of comments on my chapter seven bankruptcy to 700 plus credit score video link somewhere up here in the video. Most of the comments I've been doing my best to keep up with it, but honestly, I've just been slammed, guys. So sorry if I haven't gotten back to it, but what I'm going to do, a part of this credit hack video it series is kind of uh, uh, take your comments and turn them into videos. That way I can give you direct answers to what you're asking for. And honestly, this is one of the biggest things that I've been asked. I think I've had like 25 comments almost about when should you buy a car after filing bankruptcy. The easiest way I thought I could kind of portray this is by doing uh, an example of what it looks like, whether you buy a car immediately, you buy a car one year after, two year after, etc., cetera, and etc. Cetera. So again, just focus on this side and we're gonna jump right into the video now. All right, so if you made it this far in the video, you probably have already filed chapter seven or 13 bankruptcy, or you're thinking about filing and you're kind of exploring the repercussions of what could happen to you. Basically, when you file bankruptcy, um, everything gets discharged. You'll hear that term a lot. And uh, what that means is all your credit lines um, that, that for the most part are going to be uh, uh, erased, closed, canceled and all the debt is going to be forgiven. And you'll hear that a lot from the trustee if you're using an attorney, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, but anyway, so after all of that stuff happens, which is usually a six month process, when should you buy a car? The first thing, and I'm going to kind of steer or shift your mind a little bit to how to think about this um, in a very simple way. But the first thing I want you to think about is, do you have a car and do you need a car? I know that's super basic. But um, a lot of the times people have a car that have been included in their chapter seven or 13 bankruptcy and um, they still have it and they're still making payments on it. If that's the case, why do you need a new car? There's no point. So don't buy another car. So do you really need a car? I know that's super basic, but I just gotta throw that out there because a lot of people wanna just buy, buy, buy and get themselves trapped into that loop again. So do you really need a car? Ask yourself that. That's a question for yourself, for you and your family. Make sure you're making good financial decisions. If you don't have a car, let's just say you're starting with a clean slate, you're not allowed to file again for another seven, I think it's 10 years at this, yeah, it's 10 years, so <laughs> we'll edit that out. So it's another 10 years after you file bankruptcy. You're not allowed to file again, meaning you can't get forgiven again for another 10 years. So what that means from a creditor's approach, so if you come on this side, the creditor's like, okay, well, you're applying for a loan. I know that even if you default on the loan that I'm gonna give you, you still have to pay me back because you can't file for another 10 years. And most auto loans are, I mean, at max six, six years. I've never seen an auto loan longer than six years. So you're going to get approved. I guarantee you that. Now, the problem is you're gonna get approved for an extremely high interest rate, like to the point where it's almost very stupid to apply for a loan. Um, and when I say high to define, right over here in the board, you're looking at 25% plus if you apply for an auto loan directly after. And um, what the problem is with that is you're gonna be paying a lot into interest. So let's just say you go buy a $20,000 car um, and you can pull up a, a simple car calculator. Actually, I can do it right here, let's do that. So let's just say, theoretically, you had perfect credit and you were buying a $25,000 car. $25,000 car. Perfect credit's gonna get you an interest rate probably around, you know, zero to 3%. And your monthly payment on that for a 60 month loan is gonna be $450. Now again, these are just simple numbers I'm throwing out there. So that's what it looks like with perfect credit. Now we're gonna explore the option of what 25% interest looks like. So with 25% interest, you're purchasing the same $25,000 car and you're going to get a 60 loan, a 60 month loan at 25% 
your payment comes to $734, which is literally insane. <laughs> That's some people's rent. Uh, don't become car pro or car poor, excuse me. Um, focus with uh, when you're buying a car, focus on getting from A to B in a very safe and non luxurious way <laughs> because cars depreciate as soon as you buy them. And if you're paying 25% interest and the car is depreciating, and let's just say you lose your job or your income starts stops flooding in, then you have no way of paying this and the car is depreciated, and you have no way of filing Chapter 7 bankruptcy, which means the car is going to get repoed and you're going to have to start from scratch with two derogatory marks on your credit, a repo and a chapter 7 or 13 bankruptcy, whichever one you filed. Point of me saying all this stuff is not to discourage you. If you absolutely need a car, buy a car, okay? That's not the point of making this video is to defer you from, you know, buying a car immediately. You're going to get approved if you go to one of those local dealerships that approve with all credit. That's not the problem. The problem is uh, the actual payment. Make sure that you don't become car poor. Um, so, so that's my best advice to you. Now let's take a look at the difference if you were to buy immediately versus just waiting one year to purchase a car and let's see the drastic interest rate and monthly payment difference. I have a friend that filed chapter seven bankruptcy and one year after he applied for an auto loan, actually two, one for his uh, spouse. And uh, I have very good data on this. So this is from hands-on experience. This isn't just me guessing or guessing on, on what your actual payment will be. So he went out and he bought a $12,000 car one year after he filed chapter seven bankruptcy. And to eliminate all the variables, he followed my other videos plan, how to go from chapter seven bankruptcy to 700 plus credit score in less than one year. He followed that video very closely, but not exactly to the T. So I believe his credit score was somewhere around 650 at the time. It wasn't at a, you know, pristine, perfect 700 plus uh, credit score. So this is going to be a great example because this is where most people are going to follow because it's very hard to follow that video to a T. Um, there's just way too many flying variables out there. But anyway, so he went out and purchased a $12,000 car. At the 650 uh, credit score, his interest rate was 13%. Now this is crazy. So 13% waiting one year after filing chapter seven. That's insane. I mean, that's, that's almost half of the interest rate just for waiting 12 months. Uh, so you can definitely see the difference of, um, of, of your payment because, I mean, this is a different example. We base that off of 25%, but your savings, if we just edit this out really quick. 13%. So his payment on $12,000 at a 13% interest rate was $273. Had he have applied for that loan up front and gotten approved with a 25% interest rate, which would have been more than likely, he would have had a $352 payment. So again, um, he ended up saving himself about 700 or 700. He ended up saving himself about, what is that? 350, I don't remember what I said before, 70 bucks or 80 bucks or so, um, just for waiting 12 months to buy that car. Um, now, the funny thing about this is he actually bought a car roughly about a month, a year and eight months after. So I'll just use the example for two years from now. And um, he bought a Toyota Corolla for 15,000. At this point, two years after he filed chapter seven bankruptcy, his credit score was already 700. And he got a 6% interest rate on a 2015 Toyota Corolla for 15,000. Um, so again, this is real data that I've accumulated. So the point of making this video is to not tell you, you know, don't go out and just buy a car after you file chapter seven. There is still a chance that you could, you know, not get approved. There still is a large chance. It depends on the dealership, the credit pool, uh, whoever wants to lend you money. They may not want to lend you money. So if you have a past default on a car loan or any type of auto loan that is, or a past repo, it's going to be harder to get approved. If you just say had credit card debt and no auto loans, all your auto loans were on time, then yes, it's going to be easier to get approved because credit bureaus look at your credit profile and they're like, okay, well, this person never, yeah, they filed chapter seven or chapter 13, but they never defaulted on an auto loan. So they're going to be a lot easier to give credit to. Remember when you first filed chapter seven or chapter 13 and everything gets discharged, every inquiry, every time you apply for something after that is a very bad look on your credit. 
So don't do it. Don't just do it unless you're guaranteed you're knowing you're you know you're going to get approved, which is why I created that other video because it's a no-brainer cut straight process on how to increase your credit score the fastest you can. Now let's talk about the effects of getting a loan on a car if you're doing this because in my chapter 7 to 700 plus credit score video, I didn't talk about getting an auto loan. Um, so if you need this, this is another variable that you're kind of throwing in there and it gets complex. So the way this is going to look is it's going to look as a debt. It's actually going to lower your credit score when you get approved for this loan and it gets funded on your on your credit report. So when it shows as a debt, it's going to show as a 15, 20,000, whatever loan you actually qualify for, it's going to show as that debt tying against you and your credit score is going to be kind of dragging along. Think of it like this. If your credit score should have been here by following my other video and you apply for an auto loan, it's going to be right here with a few rocks behind it kind of tied to its ankles catching up slowly. Now once you pay off that auto loan, it's going to shoot right back up to where it should be. So that's the way I want you to think about this debt. It's not going to kill your credit score. It is going to uh, report out to the credit bureaus most likely in a, a positive manner if you're paying it on time. Um, but it is going to be a debt which kind of drags you back, which is why in my other video I explain when you get credit cards or that secured loan that I talk about, uh, you, you need to pay them off in a strategic manner that kind of catches your credit score up to where it should be so that it reports out good. Anyways, if you have any other questions about this, if I wasn't clear enough, please leave a comment. If you haven't already subscribed and you made it this far in this video, give me a thumbs up and subscribe to this video because it helps me help you make more great content like this. And if you have any other questions on other video ideas, leave it in the comments section below and I'll do my best to put out a video every single week. I'm being real with you guys. Um, it's been super busy. I mean, you can see how many listings I got going on over here. Um, I've been doing my best to try to keep up with this, uh, but stay tuned. I'll be back with another video next week. Thanks guys.